are so grateful for your blessing. Thank you for your holy written word. What a precious gift you've given to us. Thank you for the manifestation of your presence. Thank you for answers and solutions. We welcome your will. We welcome your way. And Father, we give you full access to our innermost beings. We open our hearts to you now. Thank you for divine guidance. I position myself now in the hands of your Holy Spirit. Help me to deliver your word accurately in power and boldness. Move on the hearts, the minds, the eyes, and ears of all of us. Anoint us to hear and receive your love and your instructions. Thank you for the supply of the Spirit that brings forth truth and freedom. I bind every demonic hindrance, assignment, and distraction right now in the name of Jesus, and I lose supernatural insight, wisdom, peace, and revelation. The Word of God will go forth unhindered or checked. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our foundation text is Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Let's go there. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. You know, as believers, we can walk in our God-given authority, but it's up to us to do it. It's been made available, but we have to choose to do it. You know, a lot of times I find that believers have more control than they realize. We, we, we need to understand that our say-so is powerful. What we release out of our mouths has a lot to do with what we have in our lives. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. We have to get to the place where we believe that. We, we have to settle that. We have to establish in our hearts that the word of God is true despite how we feel, despite the situations and the circumstances. Family, that's the only way to live a victorious Christian life. We have to allow the word of God to supersede our past experience, our own understanding, our own emotions. We, we have to settle that forever, that the word of God is true. We, we have to value and honor the word of God so it benefits us the way God planned for it to benefit us. Jesus gave you power to trample on the devil and evil spirits. As a believer, you've been given jurisdiction. You've been given, you've been given the ability to command the outcome. We just have to use it. Here's the thing. It's always going to be up to us. If, if we don't use it, we won't benefit from it. And that's, there's nothing I'm trying to stress more than do something about it. Say something about it. Don't, don't allow the enemy to attack you without recourse. I pray that the word of God will stir us up to such a degree that we begin to flow in the supernatural all the time. There should, there should never be a day that goes by that we don't experience the supernatural. That's intentional. That requires you and I waking up and saying, I'm going to walk in the blessing. I'm going to, I'm going, Lord, what do, you, what do you have for me today? In review, last week, we saw that freedom is available by letting truth in. We looked at Philippians 2, 5 by Philippians 2, 5, by letting truth in. We, we have to allow the truth of God's word to benefit us. We also learned that any area that we're still lacking in, any area that we don't have uh, understanding or freedom in, is simply an area that truth hasn't taken over yet. That's, that's all that is, because truth is light. And we're, if we're struggling in any area, once light comes in, we get an understanding, and that's how freedom comes. The grace of God is not just available for you and I to be forgiven. The grace of God is available for you and I to be kept 
for the, for the power of God to not only influence us, but keep us. We looked at Mary. When Mary said, let it be to me according to your word, she was choosing to let truth in. We saw that she chose to let truth in before she even verified what the angel said about Elizabeth. She chose to let truth in. She said, let it be unto me. She said, yes, I received that. And we can learn a lot from that. We have to do that. We have to say, Lord, let it be unto me, as you say in your word. Let truth reign in my own personal and private life. Mary had to let go of her own understanding in order to receive God's goodness. She had to let go of her own understanding because here's the thing. Mary never experienced what she was going to experience. Mary, Mary didn't even hear. There weren't even rumors of, of the Holy Spirit overshadowing any woman at that time and conceiving the Son of God. She had to accept that this was true because it was coming from the Lord. The third thing we, we looked at was the impossible is simply God's proving ground. The, the impossible does not shake God whatsoever. He, he loves to prove himself in areas that seem to be impossible. You know why? Because we can't get credit for it. We, we get no benefit when we know God comes through on our behalf. We, we, get, we, we don't have the opportunity to try to rob his glory. And he loves to demonstrate. He loves to show himself strong in our lives. We looked at, we have to agree with the word of God in order to benefit from it. We learned that unity only happens in humility. Unity only happens when we choose to humble ourselves and submit. And the last thing we talked about last week was your authority as a believer can be trapped by a wrong mindset. You know, the purpose of renewing our minds is to get rid of stinking thinking. It's, it's to get rid of a mindset that will trap the goodness of God from flowing in our lives. This week, we're going to look at, let's go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Here's the deal. Our authority is under attack. There's an enemy that is trying to challenge you and I for the authority that we walk in. And what we do in response to those attacks demonstrates who we begin to serve. Romans 6, 16. You know, the devil knew he could get to the the, the, the first family by creating a, an atmosphere of God's holding out on you. He knew that if he could get them to think, wait a minute, there's more? That he could, he could get an, an, an inroad to steal their authority. Do you realize the devil is still utilizing that tactic today? He is still trying to convince God's people that God doesn't want you to have fun. God, God just doesn't want you to, 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 to have that. So he tries to get us off course to buy in to his attack. Look, look at this. Romans 6, 16 says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. We will always have a choice in the influence that we choose to impact our lives. The principle is whoever you obey is who you are slave to. That's the, that's, that's the principle. God has never broken a promise. And he'll always keep his word. For God to remain God and to keep his integrity, he had to protect Adam and Eve's right to choose, even when it was wrong. Be because God is a just God. Now, wouldn't it be cool if God made them obey? You know, I had a young person uh, ask me this question. And this was a, a teenager that attends Word Life. And she said, well, if God is God, why does he even 
allow people who he knows are not going to choose him to be born? Why even let him be born? And what a valid question coming from a, a curious heart of a teenager. And here's the thing. God is love. And if we don't get to choose, that's not love at all. The only thing that makes a free will agent a free will agent is the power of choosing. Now, I get that. It would, it would be super easy to parent children if we could control their every decision. Our lives would be totally different if we could control every decision our children make. However, that's not love. And God is not going to force the outcome. Now, he'll always create a way of escape. He'll always have a path for you and I to, to, to be restored, but he's not going to make us do anything. He, he's not going to force our hand. That's not love. That's a dictatorship. That's, that's having a world of puppets, and that's not God. God is love, and he really does love you. You see, you are a free will agent. Your authority, your dominion is active. You have the ability to, to choose. Dominion and authority comes with your salvation. Dominion and authority comes with it. When you said yes to Jesus, you said yes to dominion and authority. It's like a combo at In-N-Out Burger. Burger and fries, they, uh, the uh, fries and the drink come with it. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't walk out of there and say, no, no, you keep my, my, my fries and my, and my drink. It comes with it. Dominion comes with, authority comes with your salvation. You know, it would be a lot funnier if there wasn't so many people laying down their authority. It is not okay to be ruled by fear, depression, sickness. There are people who have said yes to Jesus and have had no peace in their lives. That is not God's order. That is an absolute violation of who Jesus is and why he came to die for you. If you have sickness in your body, you don't have to tolerate it. I'm telling you, there is an anointing for healing that is present right now. And when you open your heart and you choose to receive it, you can be healed right where you are. Whether you're in the safety of your house or you're here in the safety of God's house, the anointing of God is available to not only destroy yokes, but to set you absolutely free. You need, to, you need to hear that, and you need to understand that. You know, anxiety, fear, pressure, stress, that is not a life that you should be getting used to. You know, there's somebody watching right now who just don't sleep, and that's become your norm. That's not of God. God desires for you to, to, for you to win. God desires for you to rest in him. You know, allow the Holy Spirit to do the heavy lifting in your life. Stop trying to figure everything out. I don't know who you are, but I know God is talking to you right now. You're used to controlling the outcome. You're used to figuring it all out. That is not of God. Rest in him. What he has for you is good. What God intended when he died on a cross for your behalf wasn't for you to have stress, pressure, pain, sickness, strife. That is, all of that is of the devil. All of that comes from the enemy. And you know, this is still a very valid argument in the body of Christ today. And I'm praying that light comes in and begins to minister 
to your heart and you accept the truth that I'm supposed to be healed. I'm supposed to be free. I'm not supposed to have a mind that is bombarded with what ifs that are laced with death, fear, destruction, pain, pressure. What if we flip that around? What if God's word is true? What if God really desires to protect you? What if he is really that good? What if the good news of the gospel really does keep you and protect you? You see, that's a choice. We can, we can choose to bomb, and I, and, I, and I know with everything that's in me, I'm talking to a young lady right now, and you are covered in fear. You have given yourself over to fear and it's affecting your health that's not god that's not of god and i pray that you allow freedom to come to your house today i pray that you allow deliverance to come to your house today let's go to luke chapter 10 and verse 19 again let's read our foundation text over luke chapter 10 and verse 19 Behold, I give you, those of you who are watching, those of you who are listening, you have been given authority for the purpose of trampling on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of of the enemy. Believe the truth of God's word. Allow that to come in. It's not saying you've been given authority over most things. It's not saying you've been given authority over everything up until 2020. Everything, your authority, your victory is sure. The word of God is an absolute sure foundation. And when you and I live our lives, when we commit to standing, trusting, believing, and flowing in the word of God, we're not only protected, we're overcomers. Our victory is tied to our trusting God and receiving. I I, I can't get away from receive this, receive the word of God, allow the word of God to benefit you to such a degree that you just make the decision to receive it, receive it, allow it to get in so that it can benefit you because it's God's desire. It's God's desire. If you've, you already said yes to Jesus, you already have what it takes on the inside of you to win. Healing has already come to your house. Peace has already come to your house. If you haven't said yes to Jesus, we would love the opportunity to lead you in a prayer as you open your heart and receive the love of God and receive the forgiveness of God. Here's the thing, you don't have to walk in fear. The devil doesn't have some sort of superior power over you. In fact, the only authority the devil has is the authority we give him. The only authority the devil has is the authority that we concede to him. Somebody say amen to that. Because it's true. Amen is like saying, let it be in my life. Let this, let this truth be also in, in my life. Re- receive that. Re- receive the goodness of God. His, his power depends on our ignorance. The devil's power depends on our ignorance. Because when we don't know, we don't do. When we don't know how, how much authority we have, we yield to his attacks. We, we allow him 
to take from us. The power of what you have, if you have a piece of paper handy, write this down. The power that you have is limited to your knowledge of it. If you don't have knowledge of the power you have, you're limited. You, you are not going to flow in the things of God if you don't understand what you really have. Family is so important that we have a real understanding of the dominion, the power, and the authority that has been given to us. It, it is a blood-bought gift that came from Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. Here's the thing. We're going to go to James 4, 7. If you're in a fight and your opponent leaves the ring, you win the fight. True or not true? If you're in a fight and the opponent runs out of the ring, you're the victor. Look at James chapter 4 and verse 7. There's a fail-proof technique when it comes to the opponent of your soul. You can have victory every single time when you utilize this fighting technique. It says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will get out of the ring and run, run away from the fight. That's my interpretation of it. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Are you having a fight if your opponent flees? Some of us are working too hard. Some of us are leaving out the first part of that, the part that says submit to God. You know, the opposite of that is pretty dangerous. The opposite of this scripture would be don't submit to God. Invite the devil and he will run to you. And in a world where people are full of self, in a world where people are trying to do it on their own, you hear statements like, well, I'm just going to do me. In the attempt of doing you eliminates the first part of that scripture and you don't submit to God. So not submitting to God invites the devil and he runs to you instead. And that's not your plan, that's, that's not what you, you set out to do, but you, you have to understand, you have to choose, we have to choose the word of God over our own ways, over our own understanding. When we submit to God, look, listen, listen to this, the word submit means to accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. Submitting to God positions you and I to win every single time. Submitting, choosing to submit to God assures us that the devil will flee from us because when we submit to God, we're, we're going to resist the devil. We can't, we can't push past that. And you know, it's, it's a little irritating that the, the devil has gotten a foothold in so many young minds and the attempt of making a name for themselves and an attempt to do it my way and an attempt to say, you know, the church is antiquated, the Bible, as man wrote, wrote the Bible, all that does is give the devil an inroad that is un countered that is that is uh, un, unresisted and, and and we see a lot of that we're seeing a lot of that we're seeing a lot of people who are going away 
from the word of God instead of running towards the word of God. And all that does is assure the enemy victory. And we're here right now to learn how to walk in authority. Now, that authority brings victory. What we desire is to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. What we desire is to have our needs met. What we desire is to have peace. There's, there's somebody watching right now who, what you need more than anything, sir, is peace. You, you, don't, you don't need another job. You don't need another account. You need peace. You, you are, you are, you are uh, troubled. You are, you, there's, a, there's much going on inside of your head. And it's making you sick. You, there's there's, uh, there's a, uh, a symptom. There's something going on in your stomach right now because you're trying to figure things out on your own. You're trying to do things on your own and you're, you're leaving out. And you know. You know better. But because of the, the pressure of trying to get things done, it's getting in the way of what you know to do. And I'm just trying to encourage you. I'm trying to encourage us to continue walking in the word continue walking in our authority because the 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 road of our authority brings fruit the the road of our authority brings peace it brings protection it brings fulfillment and there'll be more testimonies that come out of you know i didn't know what to do but i decided to trust God anyway. There'll be, there'll be testimony after testimonies of, of, you know what? I'm just going to trust. All I know to do is trust God. I'm just, you know what? That's enough. Keep trusting God. Keep allowing him to influence your decision-making process. You know, you have a good God on your side. You have a God. The word says, that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's a good author, and he knows how to finish well. You have a future because you've committed to, to, to him. You've said yes to him. You open the floodgates of his goodness, his righteousness, his, his peace. Continue. Continue walking in what you know and understand. Every time you decide to do you instead of doing the word, you actually walk away from God's plan for your lives. Don't do that. Settle it right now. I'm going to walk in the way that God has set out before me. Let's go to John chapter 8 and verse 31. John 8, 31. We'll read verses 31 and 32. Keep believing. Keep trusting God's supernatural power and ability. This has probably been on my heart more than anything lately. Desire to see the supernatural in your life. Continue believing God for the supernatural. Don't dumb God down. Continue to have high expectations of his miraculous power flowing in your life. James, or John 8, 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, listen to that prerequisite, who believed him, if you abide in my word, not if you do things your way, not if you do you, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Verse 32 and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Freedom comes from the word of God. Freedom comes from knowing the word of God. Freedom comes from, from choosing the word over our own experiences, understanding, background. Fear, doubt, and unbelief come from you and I trying to do things our way. When we choose the word, when we choose his will and not our will, that's when freedom 
it has the ability to flow in our lives. You know, the devil can only function through lies and deception. And a lie only has power if we give it power. How do we give a lie power? By believing it. Our belief can allow a lie to penetrate our belief system. And truth breaks that. Truth will set us free from the lies of the enemy. Like I had somebody say, and it took everything not to slap them. I had somebody say concerning the coronavirus, oh, I think we're all going to get it. Man, I, I, it was like I took everything. A believer. And I thought, dear God, why would you allow the enemy to plant a seed of destruction in your mouth? God is not desiring for his children to fall prey to the enemy's attack. But it takes you and I making a decision. It takes you and I believing God's word. Do we have the, that prayer of protection? Do we have that? Are we able to pull that up? I think I sent that, I sent that in. Let me know if we have that. I want to I wanna pray that together if we, if we do have it. Now, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 115 and 16. Psalms 115. Oh, before you go there, let's go, to, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. This is still under the point. The last point. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, the word wiles literally means cunningness, craftiness, and deception. The truth about your enemy is he doesn't have any power or authority over you to force you to do anything. What his plan is, is to get you and I to take off the armor of God. His goal is that if he can get us to get comfortable, to get weary, to, to lay down the armor of God, then he has an opportunity to get in. Standing against wiles, deceptions, lies, and deceit of the devil requires you and I having the whole armor of God. God, now let's go, now let's go to Psalms. Now let's go to Psalms 15, 16. God gave dominion to mankind. He couldn't just step in and straighten out the mess. When Adam and Eve chose to surrender their authority, God couldn't just say, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go down. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me undo that. You know why? Because he gave dominion to them. He had already gave them dominion. So God was not going to undo his word. He wasn't going to not be a just God. He wasn't going to jeopardize what he said being true to intervene. So what did he do? Psalms 115, 16 says, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Even though mankind didn't listen to God, he would have been unjust to intervene. What he did instead of violating his word is he sent Jesus. Jesus, the word made flesh, the God man, had to become a physical person so that he could have authority in the earth. Now let's look at John chapter 5, verse 26. To this day, Jesus' authority is limited to our participation. 
And here's the, the character of Jesus is he invites, he doesn't invade. The character of Jesus is he, he leads, he doesn't drag. He is never going to have that, that mindset. He is never going to be a, a, a bully. He is never going to make us, but he'll always advise us, knock, and I'll answer. Seek, and you'll find me. He's always going to give us a way to open a door. Jesus said the reason he had authority to execute judgment was because he was the Son of Man. This takes us to our next scripture, John 5, 26 and 27. John chapter 5, verse 26 and 27. Listen to, listen to these words. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. Verse 27. And has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Now, when Jesus said the father had given him authority to execute judgment, he was talking expressly about having a body. When Jesus had a body, it gave him authority on the earth. Jesus had to, that was the solution. He came in the form of man, in order to have a legal right to take care of what needed to be taken care of because he couldn't find anybody else on the earth who could do it, so he did it himself. Jesus came to restore our authority. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. We'll look at verses 18 through 20. Back to the, why didn't Jesus just stop the people from being born who he knew weren't going to serve them, you know? And I believe that question is not just in the mind of teenagers. I believe that a lot of people are thinking, you know, why, why does God, you know, allow so much to go on? You know, we have to choose. We still have to choose whom we serve. We still have to choose who we give access to. Matthew 8, 28, 18 through 20, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the, earth, of the age. Amen. Jesus gave us power and authority over the enemy in order for us to do something with it. You know, as far as walking in authority, it's not like we choose to lay down authority other things play, play a part. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a crisis. There's an emergency. There, there's something tragic that takes place. And, and what we do in those times is what allows our belief system to be reinforced or, or taken from. No one in their right mind is going to say, well, I'm just not going to walk in authority anymore. It's, it's the enemy eating away causing situations and circumstances to begin to corrode at our belief system. The way we combat that is listening to, reading the Word of God, and meditating on the goodness of God. You know, most of the things we struggle with here on earth are done away with as soon as we hear the Father's voice. As soon as God speaks, speaks to you. If there was lack, there is no lack anymore. When God speaks, he takes care of whatever the deficit is. If there is no peace in your heart, all you have to hear 
is God speak to you personally and say, I love you. I trust you. It's going to be okay. And that void of peace gets filled with the word of God, with the, with the peace and the, and the comfort of God. What we need more than anything is to hear God's voice. What we need more than, than anything is to see his word manifest in our lives. You know, I want to pray this prayer together uh, out loud. This is something that we can do all the time. This is something, this, this is how we can combat the attacks of the enemy. This is how we can be actively uh, feeding on the truth of the word of God to keep us stirred up encouraged and walking in faith. Let's, let's, let's read this together. This is a prayer of protection. Ready, read. Father God, I thank you for being my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. I thank you that you are my refuge and strength. You are a very present help in times of trouble. You are my personal helper. Thank you, Lord. I am not afraid. I am strong and courageous. I know that you will never leave me or forsake me. I know no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper. I put my total trust in you, Lord. Thank you for fighting for me. Thank you for being my rock, my salvation, and my defense. I am not moved. Thank you for preserving me. Lord, I trust you. I am blessed and favored by you. Thank you. I receive my inheritance, and I stand on your promises. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Now, how long did that take? 45, maybe 60 seconds? That is an active way to do something about being bombarded, you know, day in and day out. And if we're honest, there is plenty of negative attacks on our minds to not speak out loud the, 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 the truth of God's word, to not verbalize the goodness of God is hazardous to our health. That's the last thing you want to do because here it is. It's, it's kind of like uh, paddling upstream. To do nothing, you go downstream. We have to release truth out of our mouths. You know, that, that simple prayer, which is all scriptural, every, every bit of that came out of the scripture, that's how you actively come against what the enemy is trying to do. Now, let's, in application, how do we apply this word in our lives? How do we put this to work? How do we, how do we make this practical? Number one, submit to God. First and foremost, you make a decision to submit, submit to God. With that authority, comes responsibility. Submitting yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Number one, we'll submit to God. Number two, let's say it out loud. Ready? Read. Use my authority. You have it. It requires you to utilize it. It's God's power, but that power has been placed under your authority. The battle isn't between God and the devil because God has equipped you and empowered you to do something about it. You know, it's not right to pray, God, take care of this situation in my life. It's not right to say, God, is it your will to heal so-and-so? God, will you heal so-and-so? That's not right. The reason that's not right is because he has given you authority to do something about it. 
God is looking at us and saying, well, what are you doing about it? He's already given us the authority. He's already placed us in position to do something about it. Do something about it. Use, we have to use our authority. The, in the Gospels, Jesus never commanded his disciples to pray for the sick. You know, that is something. That could be a real, real big revelation if you receive that. He never said, go pray for the sick. The command is heal the sick. That posture all alone is different. That command is for you and I today. We are commanded to heal the sick, to do something about it. Number three. Number three is, what's it say? Don't limit God. God has given us the authority to use it, which makes it our responsibility. Don't allow what you think or feel to dictate your obedience. Trust God. Continue to do what he says do, and don't limit him. Expect a miracle. Here's a great question for all of us. When was the last time you saw a miracle in your life? Expect the miraculous. I I think for me, the last time was when I was on a, a missions trip and, and I saw this elderly man's foot go from one direction and completely turn and, and, and straighten out. And that is normal in the kingdom of God. Every crooked place should be made straight. Any deficit, any void that you and I have in our lives must bow down to the name of Jesus. Don't limit God. Expect God to do what he said he'll do. And if, you, if you've lost your job because of what's going on uh, right now, expect God to give you a better job. If, if finances have been a challenge in your household, expect God to take care of your wants, not just your needs. Begin to see yourself better. Begin to see yourself on the other side. Don't limit God. Can't God do it? Can't can't he do it again? You know, how many grace trophies do we have when we didn't think God was going to come through and he came through anyway? You know, this is a great time to look at all the grace trophies, all the times that God came through on your behalf. He'll do it again. Expect it. Number four, understand it's already done. When you and I have the understanding that it's already got done, it changes our perspective. It changes our prayer life. The victory that we have, it's the devil trying to take it from us. We're not trying to earn a victory. We're not trying to gain a victory. The health that we have, we already have it. And it's the enemy trying to take it from us. That's a different perspective. You know, uh, what, what is it? Perspective is, is, is nine-tenths of the law or possession is nine-tenths of the law. Some, however you say that. Um, you have better confidence knowing that you already have it. Flip the switch in your mentality. You already have it. It's already done. What Jesus said he'll do. He, you already have. There's somebody who's desiring a husband. It's already done. Your perspective has to shift. You're not looking for a husband. That husband, that man of God is going to find you. It's already done. You should already be prepared. You should already be, be, be handling yourself, carrying yourself as if he's there. That's a, that's a different perspective. You see, and that's what faith is. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Are you ready to receive your husband? Number five. Number five is don't let any condemnation cloud your authority. Uh, the devil loves to be the accuser. He loves to, to get in the way. He, he loves to, to get us thinking about stuff instead of thinking about who we are. 
Let's pray. You know, the world needs us to walk in authority. Do you realize you are the answer to the world's problem? Walking in authority is not for me, my four, and no more. Walking in authority is in order for the light of the gospel to spread throughout the world. And the quicker you and I just make our minds up, or just settle in our hearts, no matter what the attack, I'm going to walk in my authority. I'm going to keep looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm going to keep trusting the word of God. I'm going to allow my prayer to be not my will, Lord, but your will be done. You know, it's time for miracles. Not out of a panicking need for a miracle, but time for the world to see how good God is. It's time for you and I to begin to flow and function in the supernatural to such a degree that it's obvious that we are God's children. What an awesome opportunity to shine. What an awesome opportunity. You know, we may never get an opp opportunity like this again. And it's possible that this is our greatest moment to love out loud, to demonstrate the, the reality of the goodness of God, to demonstrate the life of God, the love of God, the compassion of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to get into your word. We know that you look over your word in order to perform it. We know that your word does not return void. And we come into agreement that the word that went forth is doing exactly what you intended it to do. Father, I pray for everyone listening and watching. I pray that they will begin to be stirred up on the inside. I pray that hope and faith would rise like never before. I pray those who you have called for such a time as this will begin to step out into action. I come in agreement with those gifts and callings that have been lying dormant to be stirred up, to be awakened. I thank you, Lord, for the harvest of souls. I thank you for the miraculous. I thank you for the peace that was released today. Lord, here we are, yielded to your voice. What would you have us to do? Thank you for your holy written word. Thank you for grace deposits and truth impartation. Thank you for victory. Thank you for teaching us and leading us and showing us how to walk in dominion and authority. Thank you, Lord, for healing our bodies. Thank you for healing our land. Thank you, Lord, for showing yourself strong in the lives of every listener. I thank you for sound minds. I thank you for power unfolding, manifesting. And I thank you for fear dying. 
I thank you for doubt being eliminated. Unbelief being snuffed out. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it now. Amen and amen.